is going on guys? Thanks for coming back for another moto vlog. Golly, it's cold out. Oh, oh geez, I hate bumps on this bike. It's finally starting to get colder out. It is like 55 degrees, but it's sunny, so like that helps at least. But the nice thing about living in Rapid City is the weather is so bipolar, it's ridiculous. So um, I think last Monday it was literally 80 degrees and I was out riding, I made a video. And then Tuesday, it was snowing. No joke, it was snowing. It was 32 degrees the next day. So this might be the last moto vlog you guys see from me on the Triumph for quite a while. Um, but the good thing is I'm definitely going to be putting out some quad vlogs uh, because God knows I'm not passing up the, the snow shenanigans on the quad because that is honestly more fun than riding a motorcycle. So be looking forward to that. Anyways, so I wanted to come out and make one last video for you guys on my engine series um, before winter hits and everything like that. So today's video, I wanted to go over turbos. I want to go over what is a turbo, how it works, and uh, maybe some disadvantages and advantages when it comes to having a turbo on your engine. So I suppose we should start off by talking about what is a turbo and uh, what's its purpose. You can kind of think of a turbo as just a simple compressor. The whole purpose of a turbo is just to compress air into your engine at a higher pressure than just the standard atmospheric pressure around us. And so if you think about that, what that allows you to do with that extra air that you're pushing into your engine, you can push more fuel into your engine. And therefore you can get more power out of your engine. That's why you guys see, uh, well, pretty much all diesel engines are turboed. A lot of uh, high-performance cars are turboed. It just, they put out more power with that uh, extra air that's pushed in by a turbo. So how does a turbo work? Well, it's actually not that complicated. You got like a, a little club meeting going on there? What, boys? Jeez. I don't know what the heck that's all about. So how does a turbo work? Well, a turbo is actually powered by your engine's exhaust gases. So everyone knows that an engine obviously puts out exhaust gases, so basically we can use those exhaust gases and pressure to turn basically a fan. Think of wind hitting basically a windmill. But instead of those blades being connected to a generator, as in a windmill's case that produces electricity, those blades are actually attached to another compressor wheel, which pulls air in from the outside atmosphere and compresses it. So there's actually two fans, two blades uh, side by side on the same shaft. So on one side we have our exhaust gases uh, pushing an impeller and then on the other side of that shaft we actually have what's called the compressor wheel which is pulling in the air like I said and compressing it. But unfortunately one thing that happens when a turbo compresses air is that the air actually heats up. So in most automotive applications if you want to put a turbo on something you have to put what's called an intercooler on something as well. And the purpose of an intercooler is to cool down those compressed hot gases or hot air from the turbo. Holy cow, we got some nice houses up here, boys. That is a mansion, holy cow. That's crazy. And then once that hot compressed air is cooled down by the intercooler, then we can use it in an engine without having to worry about uh, the engine, say, overheating or getting too hot. And if you guys are wondering at, like what kind of pressures turbos run at, um, for most automotive applications, a turbo would usually run between like 10 and 20 PSI. So the next thing I want to cover is what are the advantages or disadvantages of using a turbo on a engine? It's actually becoming really popular for automotive manufacturers to put turbos on engines. Um, the Ford F-150 has twin turbos on it on a V6 engine that produces way more power than their uh, older standard V8 engines. I actually can't think of any automotive manufacturers out there right now that aren't using turbos. And actually, here's a vehicle right now. This this is a, a turbocharged vehicle. 
the Ford Escape EcoBoost. This car, I think, probably has a 1.6 liter uh, four-cylinder turbocharged engine. So one of the main advantages or benefits to turbocharging an engine is just the simple fact that you can get more power out of it. So a lot of automotive manufacturers have finally caught on to this and basically what they're doing to get more fuel efficiency, that's the whole reason that uh, they're starting to turbocharge cars now, is because of fuel efficiency. It's not because of power, really. Um, but what they're doing is they can get more power out of an engine with a turbocharger. So what that allows them to do is actually um, use a smaller displacement engine, let's say a 1.6 liter engine versus maybe a 2.4 liter engine. Therefore, you can use less gas and uh, increase your fuel efficiency. And a lot of you guys might say, well, wait a minute, um, if you're injecting more air into the engine, doesn't that mean you just have to inject more fuel into the engine because it's turbocharged? And the answer to that is yes, but that's only when you're under boost. A lot of these cars actually don't produce boost until, uh, you know, 2,000, 2,500 RPMs. You really gain your efficiency when you're, let's say, just in town driving, when you're idling at a stoplight or uh, at like 1,500 RPMs, maybe 2,000 RPMs, just gradually accelerating, not under boost. The efficiency that you gain from using a smaller displacement turbocharged engine versus a, a larger displacement non-turbocharged engine is really no more than maybe 10% or so around there. It's really not a huge gain, but you know, anything's something to uh, these automotive manufacturers out there that are trying to comply with all the government regulations around fuel efficiency and emissions and all that. Ugh, it smells like a donkey's asshole out here. And that brings me to one of the main disadvantages of using a turbo on an engine, and that's something called turbo lag. As I was saying, most turbos don't actually produce any boost until a certain engine RPM. Smaller turbos are able to produce boost sooner and at a lower engine RPM, whereas uh, a bigger turbo, you know, for you know high performance muscle cars or that are built just to produce horsepower, they take a while to what's called spool up or produce boost. They uh, they require a higher engine RPM. So what people will do, and even manufacturers, uh, Ford included, they twin turbo their Ford F-150. They just put two smaller turbos rather than uh, one big turbo. So the two smaller turbos actually spool up sooner. It's a green light, go. The two smaller turbos actually spool up sooner and uh, they produce more power quicker and at a lower engine RPM than let's say a single big turbo. And turbos are really only becoming more common Oh my lord. Oh my lord, lady. She just ran that red light so bad. Turbocharging vehicles is really only getting more popular nowadays. I think the only thing or the only uh, kind of technological advancement that has a chance to kill off turbos is just the advancement of electric vehicles and AKA hybrid vehicles too. So that is going to be the end of today's video, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you guys have any comments or questions, definitely leave them below in the comments and I will do my best to try to answer them. That being said, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button below. And I will see you guys next Saturday for another video. Probably not on the Daytona. It'll probably be too cold for that, but maybe, just maybe, I'll give you guys a quad vlog. See you guys later.